What's up everybody? This is Clint Grover with Never Done Industries and today we're going to talk about the Never Done Bronco. The Never Done Bronco has been getting a lot of publicity lately. Uh, it was featured four different times in Peterson's Four Wheel and Off-Road magazine in their oops section because I'm a moron. Here's some pictures of that. Uh, it was also recently featured on the Discovery Channel show Diesel Brothers on an episode called Flippin' Diesel. Uh, it was some of their B-roll footage. Uh, and so locally, you know, it's been getting a lot of attention. It's been in the newspaper, things like that. People are getting excited about it. So I figured we might as well tell you where it came from and a little bit about it. So let's go ahead and get into it. Now the Never Done Bronco is a 1978 Ford Bronco Ranger. Uh, it's four-wheel drive. Uh, it has the 400 modified Ford engine in it currently. Uh, we're building a 460 for it so that it's a little bit more badass. Uh, it sits on 33 inch uh, Maxxis Bighorn tires which are badass and I recommend them to everybody. They go anywhere. Uh, they're really, really good. Uh, it has an Edelbrock aluminum intake manifold. It currently has an Edelbrock 600 carburetor on it. Uh, I also run a Holly on it sometimes. Um, it has a full exhaust on it. Uh, I changed out the uh, the ignition. I changed it from the Ford DuraSpark over to an HEI. Uh, I run an Optima yellow top battery in it. Uh, I upgraded the um, the alternator to a higher amperage unit. Upgraded some of the wiring. Uh, I put uh, fat mat through the whole interior. It's like a sound deadening stuff, and it helped a shitload. Uh, the reason that I had to do that is because of the reason that I got put in the magazines is because we crashed through the ice and ruined the interior so I had to redo the whole interior so the whole interior is all sound matted um, put a new carpet kit in it uh, did a little bit of you know this and that uh, changed out some some electrical components I put a stereo system in it uh, did some painting things like that it's still a long ways from being finished but that's kind of kind of where it sits right now and that's where it was at in in the uh, the other videos the Bronco videos that you've probably already seen on our channel and thank you for watching them by the way uh, anyway the story behind that Bronco is it actually belonged to my former mother-in-law uh, she had it for a long time uh, and I was I always really liked it you know she'd drive it drive it around every once in a while and I always thought man that thing it just kinda was speaking to me you know um, and I always really really was hoping I'd be able to get my hands on it someday well fast forward several years and and you know it was having some mechanical issues it was pissing gas all over the place and the rear main was out and it was you know leaking oil all over like really leaking oil like a quart every couple minutes uh, and it had a couple other problems you know the just from sitting for too long it had sat for for several years uh, and she was in a position where she needed a better vehicle well, I had just recently acquired a 1995 Honda Civic. Uh, it was the two-door coupe, a uh, little red one manual transmission, uh, the 1.5 liter motor. Uh, anyway, and I was planning on building a tuner car. You know, that's kind of one of the quintessential tuner cars. Uh, and I can't fit my big ass in it, but I still think they're cool and I still want to have one. And I'll let somebody else drive it. So anyway, I had this Honda. And uh, I had just gotten it running. I just changed a bunch of stuff. And I hadn't really had any time to test it. You know, I'd driven it around a little bit, but I had maybe like five miles on the thing since I had gotten it running. And anyway, she was in need of a of a, a car to drive back and forth to work and things and uh, all she had was that Bronco and I got talking to her and and I asked her if she'd be interested in that Honda because I would be interested in that Bronco and so we went back and forth a little bit and finally we decided you know what we're just gonna go ahead and trade straight up so we traded straight up we went through all that stuff uh, I was able to get the Bronco kind of running okay to get it home and then you know of course the work started and um you know i went through all the all the steering components in the front end of course i had to put tires on it the tires were all rotten that's when i put those maxis bighorns on um with, they're not paying me by the way i really do think they're badass um and you know i changed out the carburetor uh i put that holly unit on it and and i did a whole bunch of stuff you know i, I put five or six grand into the thing 
uh, and I, I drove it as my daily driver uh, for a couple of years. Uh, and the thing about the Broncos that's really, really cool is they're, they're basically like a bigger Jeep, like a Clint sized Jeep is kind of how I looked at it because the damn things will go anywhere. They won't go everywhere that a Jeep will, but pretty freaking close. Uh, they're really, really strong. They're really comfortable. They're really roomy. There's a lot of aftermarket, you know, uh, support for them. Uh, and I'm a Ford guy and so it's basically the best of all worlds you know you've got if you want to go camping I there's very few vehicles that are better for going camping getting up into the places you can't get and still hauling all your crap with you um, you know that it's it's something that it has served me very 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 well uh, and so you know after we made that trade of course I was very happy with it and I'm still very happy with it you know even though there's there's still a lot of work that that needs to be done on it now one of the most common questions that I get asked from people uh, in relationship to the Bronco is what are your future plans? What are you going to do with this thing? Uh, you know everybody knows I'm not just going to leave stuff stock or even you know close to stock really. Uh, I'm a customizer that's what I got to do to be happy with it. Uh, I, can't have, I can't have you pull up in the same thing next to me. My Super Duty is a good example of that. There's several other Super Duties that look like mine and it drives me freaking crazy. Uh, anyway, so the future plans on the Bronco. Uh, basically what I want that thing to do is I want it to be able to go anywhere and do anything and do it with relative efficiency. Uh, I want it basically as kind of like as a camping vehicle really. Uh, I'd like to put a couple of inches lift on it. I'm not sure if I'll go four inches or six inches. Uh, I'd like to put a little bit bigger tires on it. Uh, right now those Maxxis are 33s. I'd like to put a 35 or a 37 on it. Uh, I haven't decided if I want to upgrade from the half ton to the three quarter ton axles. Uh, it's got Dana 44 in the front and Ford 9 inch in the rear. Um, I obviously I'll, I'll gear it down after I, I change the tire size. Um, you know we have the 460 and the 460 is not going to be anything stupid. Uh, what I'm basically what I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting to put a I'm wanting to build an engine that that I think is the one they should have put in it from the beginning. You know, it's not going to be anything wild. I mean, it's going to have enough power to blow the tires off and, and get me through a mud hole or up a hill or, or you know, wherever I want to go. But I still want to be able to have, you know, the fuel efficiency to, to, to take me up into the mountains and, and take my family around and, and have some fun, you know, without having the drivability issues of the really nasty motors. Uh, and so, you know, that's part of that motor. It's going to be a little bit mild, but it's also, it's going to be more than, more than enough for that Bronco. Uh, as far as the transmission right now, it has a C6 transmission. Uh, it's an automatic transmission. I don't see any reason to change that unless I went with, you know, an overdrive. Um, I mean, that one, it works really, really well. Uh, the interior... Um, I'm not a stock interior kind of guy either. I'll probably end up putting suspension seats in front and rear. Uh, right now the stereo system that it has in it, um, it's going to get an upgrade from there too. I, I put in uh, not, not really crazy stereo equipment because I wasn't sure if it was going to get stolen or not. And nobody's messed with it and so uh, later on down the road I'll put in a bigger stereo and some nicer stuff and I'll custom fiberglass, uh, you know, an enclosure for some for some bigger subwoofers and, and things like that. Uh, you know, and then as far as paint, man, it just depends on what day you ask me. Uh, some days I think that I want to do a spray liner. One of my buddies, Quentin Messick, the guy whose paint shop I used for the Alero, uh, he does that vortex lining. Uh, it's kind of like rhino lining is really soft and the line X is really hard. Well, the vortex is right in the middle, you know, it's not, it's not super sticky, it's not super soft, but it's not really, really hard. Uh, and it re works really, really well for, you know, bed liners and for off-road stuff. And one of my buddies actually did a Jeep in it, uh, in a Synergy, Synergy Green, and it looks badass. I'm sure you guys will see it in the future. Uh, but I've thought about doing it blue uh, in, the, in that spray liner stuff. Uh, I've also thought about just repainting it the colors that it is. I've thought about painting it gray. I've thought about painting it black. Uh, I've thought about painting it red. I really don't know, you know, as far as... As far as color, what I'm going to do with it, you know, uh, probably something that can can withstand, you know, the, the trees and the off-road and things because, to be honest with you, that thing doesn't stay on the road very often, you know, it's an extremely capable vehicle and, and I have a lot of other cars that, that stay on the road and so that's one of the ones that I have for the off-road. So, that's kind of the... Uh, 
the gist, I guess, of the Bronco. That's where it came from. That's how I got it. That's where it sits. That's kind of the future plans on it. And and uh, for more on that one, you know, just stay tuned. Uh, in the meantime, if you have not seen uh, either of the Bronco videos, we have two of them right now. Uh, I will post them here and here or something, somewhere in there, um, so that you guys can take a look at them and, and, you know, let us know what you think in the comment section. Also, please subscribe to our channel below and check out our website at www.neverdoneusa.com. Thank you again for tuning in. We'll catch you next time.